Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Steelers Franchise. We are in week six and we are playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they are ranked, or they have an 85 overall team. They have an 88 defense and an 83 offense. Um, this is probably not going to be good because we're 58 across the board, basically. We do, we are a 59 on defense. So, hey, we're, we're yeah. Okay, so here's what we got going on. They have an elite quarterback. I don't know who it is because I've not looked at their team yet. Um, let's just get straight into that. Let's look at their their roster and see. Look at all of those. Everybody's morale is down. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe playing on such a wonderful team. Oh, well, I see who their quarterback is. What a surprise. Tom Brady is their quarterback. Ah, oh boy. What can Tom Brady do against a team like ours with Brandon Ayuk, Corey Davis, Randall Cobb, A.J. Green, Marquez Callaway? Yeah, I can see him doing some damage, Zach Ertz. Wait. Yeah, I can see him. Well, he'll definitely have time to pass. He's got a good offensive line. And I do not have a good defensive line. I, I don't have a good team at all. But remember, we're playing for uh, the number one pick. So, Michael Parsons, 97 overall outside linebacker. Beautiful. Marcus Peters, 86. Patrick Peterson, 85. Derek Stingley, uh, 79. And so on and so forth. Uh, Quadre Diggs, uh, 86. Harrison Smith, 92. Okay, so it's going to be impossible to pass deep on these guys. And you know what? Let's just get into this ball game. Let's get this. Let's get this brutal game over with. I'm telling you, we're going to win a game. <clears throat> we're going to win a game soon. You just wait and see. It's going to happen. It may not be this week. It may not be next week. It may not be this season, but we will eventually win a game. As the man himself, Brian Lewerke, comes out. All these guys, they look good in the Steelers uniform. The bird's flying over. Let's get this game started. So, as I'm recording this, it is actually Thursday, April 27th? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the date. It's Thursday. It's draft day. Um, today is going to be fun. I'm, I'm a big football nerd. I'm an NFL nerd. I'm, I'm the guy that watches all of the, all of the draft coverage and I'll watch the whole freaking thing and I love it. I can't wait to see it. This is, to me, this should be pretty fun. I, I believe that, I, I bet you there's going to be some trades in the first round, probably early too. Because there's some good quarterbacks available. And you know just as well as I do, that's what that's what all teams are wanting is a franchise quarterback. And there's about three or four in there that potentially could be. Again, that's potential. Because remember, they, they said that Ryan Leaf was a little bit better than Peyton Manning at one time coming out of college and everything. And, and you see how that turned out. So, I mean, and if... Some of you may be too young to remember that, but I remember that well because I grew up a Tennessee fan, so of course I followed Peyton Manning. But yeah, you never know. Um, you really never know what's going to happen in the NFL draft. You don't know if these players are going to come out and and be great. I mean, come on, look at look at number 199 right there fixing to take the snap. I mean, this guy was drafted in the... The sixth round, 199th overall, Tom Brady. Man, I'll tell you what, if some teams could go back and do that again. But it makes you wonder. See, I, I think about this kind of stuff right here. I'm like, if Tom Brady would have went in the first round, which he did not have a first round grade at all. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I actually uh, tackled him for a loss. Anyway, so yeah, you, if... Tom Brady did not have a first-round grade, um, but what would have happened if he would have went in the, say, the second round to Seattle, you know, or or a team like that, or 
or he went to the New York Giants or the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Cleveland Browns or whomever. You can name any one of the 32 teams. And it makes you wonder if things would have turned out the same way uh, that they did. Um, I mean, I think things like that. I'm like, what if he was picked at 198? You know, what if he would have went, I think it was the Miami Dolphins that had picked 198. What if he would have went to the Dolphins? You know, I, you just never know. You just never know with these guys. And that's what's so fun about uh, the NFL and about this time of year and everything. And everybody is getting amped up because this is the this is the start. This is really the start. Free agency has already been crazy. Um, but I really believe that we're going to see some trades happen tonight. I believe that, again, like I said, you're, you're going to be watching this and by the time you watch this video, the draft will already have happened. Like I said, I'm recording it on the day of, the morning of the of the draft. So it's going to be interesting to go back and listen to this after I after watching the draft tonight. But um, yeah, it's 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 a curious time. It's a curious time, but I believe there's going to be some trades in the first round. I believe, you know what? I'm a, I'm going to be honest with you. I live in Kentucky. I'm right on the Tennessee border, and I know I'm not really commentating this game very much, but you guys know how this franchise goes. There's not a lot to talk about right now. But I live very close to Nashville. I'm about 30 miles from Nashville right now, and the buzz around here is, what are the Titans going to do at 11? Now, I I just have a feeling. Now again, I may be wrong. They moved AJ Brown last year on draft day, uh, which was probably to me one of the dumbest moves that I've ever seen. Uh, come on now, and and the Titans suffered for it this year. They really did. They looked good at the beginning, of the, but when it come down to it, when they needed playmakers, they needed AJ Brown this year, and not having that that big target to throw to. I mean, they had some other guys that stepped up, but come on, you cannot replace an A.J. Brown. And he won a freaking Super Bowl this year in Philadelphia. You know, I mean, it's like, come on now. He went to the dang Super Bowl in the first year that he was that he was on your team, and it's like, and nobody wants to give Brady a high five. Did y'all see that? Man, I wish I could rewind that. That's funny because that's actually happened in real life. Tom Brady was was running around trying to get people to give him a high five and nobody would. I seen that on the game, but that anyway, that's funny. But yeah, trading AJ Brown is crazy. I just have a sneaky suspicion that they're going to move Derrick Henry. Now again, I promise you, I'm recording this the morning of. It is now it's 9:30 in the morning. On the day of the draft, on day one of the NFL draft 2023. So I don't know if this happens or not. We'll see tonight. Uh, but like I said, uh, you're going to see the, or watch this video and, and the the draft's already going to happen, had, had already happened. So um, I'm curious. And I really wanted to do this episode today and kind of give my thoughts on the draft and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I really believe that they're going to move Derrick Henry. I know that may sound crazy, but I don't know what kind of trade value you can get for him. I mean, it is Derrick Henry, and he is a superstar stud running back, and I think he's probably got five or six more years in him. That's just me. Um, they ran him like a, a crazy person in Tennessee. I mean, they... They ran basically every play. I mean, that, that guy has been worked to death. But I believe that he's still, man, he's so good. I mean, you cannot take him down on the first hit. I mean, good grief. He is that, he's that explosive and he's that powerful. And anybody that's that big and can move like he can, it's absolutely insane. And absolutely not, we are not going for a, a uh, we're not punting, no. This team is garbage, and we're going to try to make something happen. This may be a dumb mistake. Oh, wow. Huh. Micah Parsons hit me. Fantastic. 
I send everybody deep on fourth down and I throw the ball four yards. If it went for it. All right, here we go. But yeah, I'm curious to see. I, I really believe that that these teams in the in the in the first couple of picks are not going to overthink this. I, I know we've had a lot of um, a lot of talk, a lot of going back and forth because of this test that those guys took of of C.J. Stroud of scoring like an 18 on it and. Um, Everybody else scoring in the high 90s on it. I, I don't know. We'll see if that actually matters. I don't think it will. I think Houston takes him at two. I guess we'll see. Um, and we are down, what is it, 10 to nothing. And we're terrible. <laughs> but you already knew that. So our offensive, yeah, we're just going to click something because it's not going to matter. All right, here we go. And as you see, I've knocked it down to three-minute quarters just to get through these games a little quicker. But yeah, I really believe that Stroud will probably go two overall. And then that's when things get interesting. You've got the Arizona Cardinals that are, that are on the clock. And at that point, I mean, you can't really argue with, with Will Anderson Jr. I mean... That guy's that guy is a game changer. He really is. I mean, he's amazing. He's gonna be he's gonna be your pass rusher for the next ten years. And this league with the way that that offense has just become so pass happy and everything, you need somebody that's gonna rush the passer with that type of velocity and strength and and everything else. That's what you need. Um, so I think they, they absolutely have to select him if he's still available. Who knows what could happen? Um, but I'm going to tell you what, I really believe that the guy that's probably going to be one of the biggest impact players, I cannot believe I just caught that. One of the biggest impact, impact players of the draft is going to be Jalen Carter. Uh, the defensive tackle from Georgia, this guy is unbelievable. And I know that that he's had some off the field issues and with his uh, I guess arrest or whatever, whatever was going on. You guys know the story there. I'm going to tell you, I think that that some team is going to is going to get an absolute steal in this draft when they draft him. He's a day one starter. I mean, defensive tackles are a big deal in the NFL. They really are. I think they're probably next to your oh – boy, I just threw a pick. Next to your quarterback and your wide receiver and left tackle maybe. I mean, you, this guy is going to be a stud wherever you put him for the next 15 seasons. Um, I'll be honest with you. I know there's no possible way that this happens. Again, as you know from this franchise, I'm a Steelers fan. I would be ecstatic. I'm talking about absolute good grief. I'm talking about absolutely jump up and down, screaming, yelling, doing all that dumb stuff if they if he was to fall to 17 and the Steelers pick him. I'd be happy with that. I don't see it happening because there's going to be some teams that that are like, "You know what?" We can deal with that off the field stuff because there's a lot of good uh, players, good teams, good organizations that can handle that kind of stuff. I mean, come on, these guys are. Th this is not a, a high school teams that we got going on here. These are these are professional athletes. These are multi billion dollar corporations. They can handle this. So, again, I think Jalen Carter is going to be pretty amazing. So. There you go. There's my take on that. And I think you're going to see, I think you'll probably see five quarterbacks drafted in the first round. I guarantee, I mean, you've got uh, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. I think Will Levis will go probably in the top 10. I think Anthony Richardson will go also in the top 10. Um, and then I think Hendon Hooker from the University of Tennessee is going to be another one that that teams are I've seen his name fly up a lot of draft boards all of a sudden, and 
a lot of mocks are draft are putting him in the the lower twenties. Um, again, I'm a Tennessee fan, so that's pretty cool. The guy is the guy can do everything. Uh, if he wouldn't have been injured this year, if he wouldn't have have gotten hurt this year, I believe he would have been up there in the talk with with the other the big four right now. Uh, I may be wrong. He may be terrible. He may come out and just suck it up in the NFL. I, I don't think he will because he's a smart guy and everything, and I think he's going to be a really, really good player for somebody. He is he a day one starter? No, I don't think so. But who is? I mean, let's be honest. Who is a day one starter when it comes to the quarterback position and it being somebody that can actually – make a difference for your team. There's been a few, not a whole heck of a lot. And there's another pick. And by the way, talking about these these um, quarterbacks of the future, as you can see, I'm definitely going to get one in this offseason. Um, and again, I know I've been rambling on about the draft and everything, and I hope that's okay. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this right here. I'm just having fun. I'm playing again. You guys know I'm playing on all Madden, playing three-minute quarters. I'm sorry. We're playing two-minute quarters, and I'm still getting beat 17 to nothing. <laughs> um, and I'm not trying to tank. It's just that I have that bad of a team. So there you go. There, That's that in a nutshell, basically. So I'd like to at least keep them from, from hitting the 20 mark. Um, I don't know if that's going to be possible because they're they're pretty much carving us up and doing whatever they want. But the good thing is a lot of these players that don't get any playing time, they're getting playing time, and maybe they can stay on our roster next year and and be somebody that that can develop a little bit. Definitely not in the starters. There's not a single starter that I have on this team. There's not even a single third string player on this team, but who knows, maybe somebody can can shine forth and do something that's halfway decent that, who knows, may want to keep them around for a season or two and maybe develop them a little bit. Maybe when you got a good quarterback and a couple of more good pieces uh, that we're going to address in the offseason, maybe that, that'll work for them. And there we go, 17 to nothing. And you kind of knew that was exactly what was going to happen. Um, is there any real reason to even look at the player stats? Lewerke, 5 for 15. He had 90 yards passing, which that's pretty exciting. Snoop Carter, we just didn't, Connor, we didn't really run the ball. We didn't have a lot of time. Uh, John Hurst had one reception for 40 yards. That's pretty awesome. Um, Total tackles, there you see that. Tackles for losses, we had two. No sacks, of course. No interceptions. So there you go. Let's go see what we got going on now. And again, like I said in a previous video, what I, my plans are... Oh, look at there. See? Nice. See, I know this isn't huge, uh, but we're able to... We're starting to get some of these guys upgraded a little bit because they're playing now. So that's kind of cool. No, I don't want a weekly goal. Snoop Connor. Let's see what we can do. I'd like to have you as an elusive back. Let's see what that does. Awareness one. Okay, not bad. Not bad. And I'll just let the computer do the rest of those. So, all right, let's sim through this. Next week, it looks like we are going to the Dolphins. Uh, we'll see where we're at, see their record, and then we'll go ahead and call this one. So they're four and two. They're an eighty-two overall team. Uh, they have JJ Watt, or TJ Watt on their team. Fantastic. That should be terrible. Um, but yeah, there you go. So we'll go ahead and call this video done, and we will be seeing you soon. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that stuff you know to do. Um, and we'll be seeing you soon with more Steelers franchise. Have a great day.